Hey guys, welcome to a Daily Dose of Greatness Quest. This is Trevor Crane, and today's episode I'm shooting in my office. Uh, it's a video episode, so for those of you listening on uh, podcast, make sure you check us out on YouTube. And in the background of where I'm holding my camera right now, you can see my bookshelf where I've got some of my books and posters and things, but I've got a picture of Muhammad Ali over my fireplace. Uh, today's show is all about the greatest of all time, and today's show is dedicated to Muhammad Ali. I just read his book, The Greatest and I know you're going to love the show. I told you, all of my critics, that I was the greatest of all time. Cowboy. Welcome to a Daily Dose of Greatness class with your host, Trevor Crane, my daddy. He's going to help you take your life and business to the next level. Here I come to save the day. Trevor Crane here, 11-time number one best-selling author and the founder of Epic Author Publishing, coming to you live every day so you can plug in every day to build your ideal business so you can live your ideal life. If my daddy can do it, then anybody can do it because he's a weirdo. You're supposed to make me sound cool. <laughs> so welcome back. I just finished the audiobook, The Greatest. And guys, I love books. I'm so excited that my career now is helping people tell their stories. And I love to read about other people's stories. I love to study the greats. And how else, What? What? how much greater can you get than Muhammad Ali? Like I said, I've got his poster hanging in my office uh, where he's standing up over his fight, I think, with Sonny Liston. <laughs> I think that's the fight where he said, I am the greatest. Not only do I knock him out, I picked the round. And today I want to share with you the eight lessons that I got from Muhammad Ali from reading his autobiography. And I listen to audiobooks. If you guys are not listening to audiobooks, I don't know what you're doing. Like, I, I love, I know you're listening to podcasts, you're probably listening to audiobooks. But if you're not like subscribing to um, Audible, then you should absolutely be doing it. I love it because I can multitask. I can do, this is one of the only times I can multitask because I'm a big dumb guy. I can like handle like physical labor and listening to something that's about what I can handle. Now, here are the lessons I got from Ali. I wrote them down on a little sticky tab here. I made some notes on my computer. I've been reading this book for the last few days and I absolutely loved it. Um, I'm going to give them in what I think is an order of what I learned from when Muhammad Ali was a young man uh, to when he, you know, finished his final fights and uh, what went into this book. So number one, what I thought was really stood out for me was the focus and obsession that he had as a even as a young man when he recognized that he could fight. He just never dropped the ball. And I read this about Lance Armstrong, which I know is not a popular guy anymore after he they found out that he drugged and he cheated uh, to win the uh, Tour de France. But one of, his, um, one of his rules to success was an obsessive, compulsive, like obsessive desire to win and a relentless focus. And, and I think that oftentimes that's criticized in our culture. And I, I love the fact that Muhammad Ali did all the things that he did, not just in the ring, but in the political spectrum on the world platform, uh, he was a winner. And he was someone who was always willing to listen to his own voice. I'm getting ahead of myself on these lessons here. But he had a focus, an obsessive focus. When we lose focus, we're not going to go ahead and get what we're, what we're after. And I think that that's really key. One of the things, I've got book posters in the back of me right here, that I help my clients do when I'm helping them write a book is I make, help them make a declaration to the world that they're going to make it happen. Like Muhammad Ali is the one who called himself the greatest. And then he lived, he, made, he turned his dream into reality by speaking it into existence. And he lived up to that expectation of himself. <laughs> I love this freaking guy. All right. Number two, hard work. Holy shit. Mind and body. He knew that he needed both. So he worked hard, harder than any athlete at that time. He, he uh, would run to the gym. He oftentimes couldn't even get to the gym because it's across town and he couldn't get a ride. So he ran to the gym. He didn't start counting his reps until he was in pain. Hard work. All too often, like my daughter, she's 11. She's a kid, but she doesn't want to work hard. And I've had people work for me in the past who wanted to take lunch breaks. Lunch breaks? <laughs> I get it. And I know that by law you're supposed to get a lunch break. But like honestly, if you're not committed to hard work and, and falling in love with the journey of hard work and the lessons that you get inside of it, you're fucked. 
I mean, if you, if you want to become, if you want to become great, if you want to learn from the greats, you might as well study the greats. And I believe if you don't, you don't really know something until you live it and you can't live it until you teach it and you don't know it and yada, 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 until you live it and teach it, which is why I'm sharing with you my lessons today. Number three, the skill and the will. <laughs> you got to have the skill and the will. Now I wrote down what uh, Muhammad Ali talked about his, the definition of being a champion. And I wrote it in my computer here, uh, my notes when I was um, running and I was probably exercising. And I had to stop to write this down. He talks about what it takes to be a champion. Champions are not made in gyms. Champions are made from something they have deep inside of them, a desire, a dream, a vision. They have to have last minute stamina. One of the reasons Muhammad Ali trained so hard is he knew that he had to be able to go the distance. He had to have last minute stamina. He had to be a little faster. Champions have to have the skill and the will, but the will must be stronger than the skill. Many fighters have lost to less skillful opponents who've had the will to win, who are determined to keep going no matter what. Muhammad Ali also said that fighters are discoverers. They discover something about their opponents or about themselves that others don't know. No one can tell them what to do, how to fight, or what to do. Oh, excuse me. No one can tell them how to fight and what to do. So Muhammad Ali knew and somehow learned and that he needed to find his own way. Yes, he had advisors around him. Yes, he had trainers. Yes, he had people around him to support him. Yes, they could coach him. Yes, they could train him. Yes, he had authorities telling him what he should be. His name should be Cassius Clay when he chose Muhammad Ali. He had the world stage telling him what he could and could not do when he avoided the draft. And instead of listening to any of that crap, he listened to the voice inside. <laughs> At a time, when he was 22 years old. When he won the world, uh, the heavyweight champion of the world for the first time from Sonny Liston, 22, <laughs> telling the world he was the prettiest, he was the greatest. Another thing I learned from Muhammad Ali, man, is he knew he was a marketer. He was constantly promoting a lot of that song and dance and all of that noise that he was making was to get TV's attention, to get the media's attention, and he got their attention. He ended up calling the biggest purse the world had ever seen when he fought Foreman in uh, the Rumble in the Jungle after he had come back from a four-year exile. Where after when he said he wasn't going to join the draft and he wasn't going to serve Uncle Sam and he wasn't going to support the war in Vietnam, he supported, he said for his religious beliefs, he was not going in and he was not going to fight and he had nothing against the Viet, Viet Cong. And boy, did he take shit for that. They took, his, they took his only way to make money at the time, which was uh, boxing, obviously. The only income he could earn was when he was on the road speaking and he had his buddies uh, book him speaking gigs and he spoke all around the country and he spoke at every college and university he could find. And he found that the people actually supported his beliefs and his decisions and it was more of the politics and the government that were holding him back. But when he went to go fight in the Rumble in the Jungle in Zaire, when he was on his way back to, to retrieving his heavyweight crown and he was fighting George Foreman, um, he got a $10 million purse. Each fighter got $5 million for that fight. And in that fight, surrounded by his advisors, with all the training and preparation he had done to float like a butterfly, sing like, uh, sting like a bee, he was in the middle of the fight, in the middle of the second round, fighting George Foreman. And he saw an opportunity. He saw something in his opponent. He saw the way to beat him was to tire him out. And he saw that it wasn't by floating like a butt by dancing and his his crew was telling dance champ dance and instead for the first time in ali's career he hit the ropes he hit the ropes in the middle of a in the middle of the fight and he let george foreman pummel him because he knew that he needed to tire the guy down at the time um ali was in his 30s and foreman was in his 20s and he was he was like a crusher but uh muhammad ali saw the vision for himself yes he had advisors but he was willing to listen to the voice inside. I think that was one of the most important lessons that is congruent with some of my current mentors talking about what we find inside. Going back to what he talked about as being a champion, that a champion has to, that a champions are made from something they have deep inside them. A desire, a dream, a vision, that they have to have last minute stamina, that they have the skill and the will, 
Homeboy knew that he had the will. What I also learned from Ali was when he talked about the difference between being the victor and the defeated. And oftentimes, and I wrote this down, too many victories can weaken you. What he saw in Foreman was that the guy had had so many knockouts, even before the third round was typically when he knocked a man out. His big prediction of what he wanted to do was knock Muhammad out in the in the round uh, three. He'd never gone past round eight and only hit round eight three times in his career up until that stage. Muhammad Ali took him to round eight and beyond. And Muhammad Ali knew that too many weak, too many victories weaken you. He'd already experienced that himself. He'd already experienced failure. He'd already experienced being defeated. And he learned how to come back from that. He goes on to say that the defeated can rise up stronger than the victor. <laughs> Holy shit, what a good... Uh, what good lessons. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to insert a little uh, best of Muhammad Ali right now before I wrap this up. So you got to watch this video. I'm going to go ahead and do some video editing here and I'm going to add this in. This is something I found on YouTube. Over 5 million views. So check this out. He would come to the gym and if it's, say, he didn't get a ride to the gym, he didn't have no car, he would run. He would run across the causeway. Muhammad Ali, one of my great heroes, had a great line in the 70s when he was asked, how many sit-ups do you do? He said, I don't count my sit-ups, I only start counting when it starts hurting. When I feel pain, that's when I start counting because that's when it really counts. That's what makes you a champion. Jerry, I'm the greatest fighter that ever stepped foot in the ring. Money will be lost that night. This will be the biggest upset in the century of all boxing. I think you're a big bag of wind. Damnedest showman that ever lived, and you ain't kidding anybody. The odds are seven to one. It's very big odds for a heavyweight championship fight. It has to be Liston. Liston is a much bigger puncher. Where all these big mouth people talking about I talk too much, well, I want all of them to be there, and I'm going to shut up all of his mouth. And Cassius Clay has won after six rounds. Not my name no more. You want to keep calling me a white man's name? I'm not white. Continues to scream at Terrell. He beat the hell out of those who didn't want to use his name. Mr. Muhammad Ali has just refused to be inducted into the United States Armed Forces. I'm just about broke. I'm not allowed to work here now in America. I'm going to fight not for me, but to uplift my little brothers who are sleeping in concrete floors today in America. They want to be more famous to have people. It's a wonderful world. I'm gonna float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. George K. hit what his eyes can't see. All of you chumps are gonna bow when I whip him. All of you, I know you got him. I know you got him picked, but the man's in trouble. I'm gonna show you how great I am. Bluffed him, I done everything. Beat him up, basically, for about five or six rounds. I thought it was easy. Then about the sixth round, he whispered in my ear after I'd hit him in the side, that all you got, George? Who's gonna stop me? Well, ain't nobody gonna stop me. I must be the greatest. I took up the world. I took up the world. I told you, all of my critics, that I was the greatest of all time. He was not courageous enough to take risks and accomplish nothing in life. Kid, you always bet certain fellas, I'm going to be champion one day, and when I'm champion, I'm going to come back and show you I'm wrong. Another said, guys, I'm going to be a great doctor one day, and I'm going to be a dentist, or I'm going to be a great scientist, I'm going to be a president of the country. And But very few people actually are able to make good of the boats and come home and say, I told you.
How freaking awesome was that? How could you not be inspired by Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time, who spoke his will into existence? I talked before about how I am statements are so powerful and every, every day I am focused on I am a marketer, I am a closer, I am a leader. But how about having the phrase and putting it on a world stage of having the balls to say, I am the greatest. I am the greatest of all time and living up to that. How many people have done that? How many people have the courage or the balls to do it? And I, and I find it difficult to even challenge myself to say that. And I'm wondering, what the fuck am I going to be the greatest at? But now that I even said that, I know what it is. I know what it is for me. I, I am the greatest father. I am the greatest husband. I am the greatest leader. I am the greatest businessman. I am the greatest friend. I am the greatest son. That is my goal to become the greatest. Now, I don't know whether I'm not going into heavyweight championship boxing. I, I want to challenge myself to become the greatest at whatever it is I do. One of the reasons why I'm making you a video right now instead of just doing an audio podcast is I can do an audio podcast easily. It's not exactly easy. I have to plan it just a little bit about what I'm going to say, but it's harder for me. It, it, it's more challenging for me. It's scarier for me. It's more vulnerable for me to connect with you here. To look you in the eye, to 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 get better at to, to speak to you on video. I've gotten by on my voice and speaking on the phone, and I mostly meet with my clients on the phone and the face to face thing. I've got to prepare. I've got to make sure that the lighting's right and the sound is right and that everything is delicious for you so that I'm entertaining. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Bullshit. I have to go ahead and get beyond this. I have to go ahead and challenge myself to get just as comfortable in front of this and in front of you as anything else. And so I'm here trying to become the greatest. All right, hold on. Let's go ahead and continue here. Uh, marketing and promotion. <laughs> Muhammad Ali was, I, I can't think of a better example. In fact, I want to model his marketing and promotion that he did and how he saw into opportunities. When he was banned from boxing, he had to find ways to get back out. He challenged Frazier at the time, the heavyweight champion of the world, and he called him up on the phone and a lot of him, and he said, brother, let's do this thing. Let's stage that I'm mad at you and you're mad at me and these are two brothers trying to kill each other. A lot of what he did was just sensationalism for the media. It wasn't real. It was created to go ahead and create a attention and attraction to get people to love him or hate him because he did he didn't matter it was what was going to fill the box office and get the 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 power on to to create the tension in the people who were decision makers to go ahead and bring about the fight that he wanted to have happen there kept there was so much government pressure from like Nixon Richard Nixon the president of the United States hated freaking Muhammad Ali <laughs> and didn't want to give him his title back didn't want to give him the chance to even fight. And so Muhammad Ali found a way to, to, to use media and the public to go ahead and influence common opinion to get him back. And he staged a whole thing where he was trying to kill Foreman and Cummins, not Foreman, uh, Frazier in New York City or wherever the gym was and like bring him out and they decided to have a rumble in the park. And then Muhammad Ali talks about how did that leak, how did the leak get out? He goes, I know because I started it. And the people would swear, thousands of people swore that they saw Frazier and Muhammad Ali duking it out in the streets, which never happened. But, the, but, but Muhammad Ali was able to use the media and marketing and promotion to his benefit so that he used it to his own ends. I love this guy. I love books, guys. Look at the amount of information you can learn when somebody puts their heart and soul into a book. And you should write a book. Holy shit. If you haven't written your book yet, please give me a freaking phone call. Please reach out to me on social media and let me help you write your book. What's more important about you reading Muhammad Ali's story, anybody else's story, or my stories is you telling yours. Let's get into this. Let's finish this up. Muhammad Ali loved kids. I wrote that down in my notes. He loved the people. He decided to go ahead and make his winning in his championship and his his career about the people that he wanted to represent, not just about his name and his fame, but he made it about all the downtrodden. He chose to go ahead and take black rights and uh, African-American rights and put it at the pinnacle of what he was fighting for against the establishment and against whitey. <laughs> I do recognize I'm about as white as you can get, <laughs> but you gotta love the freaking guy. 
Um, I guess that's all I got for you guys. Too many victories can weaken you. The defeated can rise up stronger than the victor. Here's my challenge for you today. There's a bunch of quotes that I'm going to go ahead and put on today's episode uh, with pictures of Muhammad Ali all over them. So go check us out on uh, uh, the, the the transcript from today's episode. Look at all of the the video snippets that I've got that, I, that I'll post up and the, the images that I put up. But challenge yourself to become the greatest. That's something. Like I just did right now. I didn't know that that's what I was going to do today or even what I was going to challenge you with. But become the greatest mother, the greatest wife, the greatest husband, the greatest father, whatever it is. Become the greatest businessman. Become the greatest leader, the greatest role model to your kids and friends and family. And that's my challenge for you. Learn from the greatest, the greatest of all time. Read his book. It's called The Greatest. I listened to it on audio. Freaking awesome. And I can't wait to see you tomorrow, another Daily Dose of Greatness Quest. Well, I'm going to share with you another way to take your life and business to the next level. Uh, not through something all complex, but through simple things that you can apply to your life to make it greater. Make today magnificent. To get even more awesomeness, which means all my best stuff, download my app by texting Trevor to 36260. It will show up right on your cell phone. Just text message the word Trevor to 36260. Talk to you soon.